today is about blood immunology. So we're going to quickly go through the first three parts of this where we're going to talk about overview of blood composition and function. These are things you should be familiar about. I'll talk a little bit about the viscous properties of blood and mechanism of coagulation. And we're hopefully going to spend, I would say, at least the last half, not the last two-thirds of the class, on kind of the immune system, talking about the cell types and the functions and the disease states that happen when you have defects and, uh, in your immune system. Right. So first off, again, function of blood. Hopefully this is a review for most of you. Um, it is exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. It transports nutrients to cells. It gets waste from cells and transports that to the kidneys. And it's actually a source of heat, right? You're warm-blooded. Your blood circulation is one reason why you're warm-blooded. It keeps you at a stable temperature. But also fights infections and maintains homeostasis. All right, and there's obviously you have an immune system to fight those infections. What's blood com comprised of? Well, it, most people on average have about five liters of blood in their body. A little less than half of it is blood cells. All right. Um, so most of that is broken down to, again, this is the majority of those cells are red blood cells. A very small percentage are white blood cells and a very small percentage are platelets. All right. What's not uh, blood cells is plasma. And what's plasma? Plasma is 90% water by weight. This is about 20% about of the water in your body. And the other about 10% is 8% plasma proteins. So these are proteins that aren't part of cells but are briefly floating in your blood. And they do these various functions. And some inorganic trace elements, minerals, and cholesterol emulsify fat. Some of that is obviously uh, signaling hormones. Some of that is good cholesterol that helps maintain flow in your blood. Some of that is bad cholesterol that builds up into plaques in your arteries. Okay. Questions? So for red blood cells, these are the vast majority of the cells in your, in your blood. All right. There are 5 million cells per, mil square, per cubic millimeter of blood in your body. That translates to that many cells, red blood cells in your body. That's about, I want to say 25 trillion. If I got the um, number even quickly. Okay. Again, most of these red blood cells are from um, your, uh, come from your undifferentiated stem cells. So, in Dr. Gisbert's lecture about stem cells, they talked about stem cell, uh, stem cell lineage, and we reviewed that from the blood extensively. Um, and this is again from your bone marrow. Okay. So any they're manufactured from the bone marrow. They're absorbed by your spleen once they uh, red blood cells outlive their basic lifespan. Um, red blood cells themselves have he uh, hemoglobin. So that's the protein that transports oxygen and carbon dioxide. And this is something we've mentioned previously, like this hemocrit. What hemocrit is, is actually the volume percentage of red blood cells in your blood. All right? So you need a hemocrit, I'm assuming it's around like 47, 42 to 47, which is considered normal, because that's the percentage of red blood cells that should be in your body. Okay? And so just to review what hem hemoglobin is, this is the protein. Each red blood cell that contains several thousand of these I'll say, well, sorry, 100,000 of these molecules in it. And it has these heme groups, which are these iron groups. And that's where your oxygen will bind for transport. And that's where it exchanges the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. It's binding to these heme groups in the, in the hemoglobin. Globe, sorry. So again, what are the other components besides red blood cells? Well, you have your platelets. These are also known as thrombocytes. And these are fragments of a big cell type called a megakaryocyte. All right, so those, those, that is, again, a precursor to, to platelets. What those are, obviously, are at the end of a progression of development from your um, blood, blood stem cells, blood cell stem cells. And basically, they're big cells that then break off into fragments that become your platelets. All right? And there's a lower concentration of them in the blood than red blood cells, but they do make up a significant proportion of your blood. Um, and these, obviously, are your clotting factors. All right, they're the things that bind to protein fibrinogen, we'll talk a little bit about how coagulation happens 
But these are the things that form the, the, the clots when you have bleeding in your, in your, uh, in your blood vessels. Okay? And then, of course, white blood cells. These are a very small percentage of the cells in your blood. Um, there's normally a couple of thousand per cubic millimeter. But obviously, that number jumps when you're fighting disease or infections. Um, and these are the ones, obviously, that, that identify and dispose of foreign substances, get rid of diseases, produce antibodies. 